fibers and floss. I'm here to celebrate New Year's with you guys. I hope you guys are all enjoying your day off today and are able to enjoy some stitching as well. Um, I'm doing my, kind of my own take on the 12 by 12 for New Year's Eve this year. What I've done is pulled out my whips and thought that I would um, go through them and stitch for one hour on each project. Um, and then I have a couple other things that I like to share throughout that as well. So I'd like to get started. The very first project I have for you today is the Owl Forest Embroidery Treasure Island. What I'm going to do is actually insert two pictures right here. Um, one picture you're going to be able to see where Treasure Island was prior to me stitching for one hour. The other picture you'll see what the stitching looks like after the hour. Okay. So now I'll show you the overall stitch. So Treasure Island is something that I've been working on for a while here and it's nearly done. Um, you can see at the bottom what I was able to accomplish in just an hour was the ship here and the waves. Um, you know, an hour is not a lot of time to get some stitching done, I'll tell you that for sure. This project is almost done though and I will be completing it in January of 2024. Um, it is a stitch along which has actually completed now. All the pieces were out as of the end of December. So that one is almost finished. That's my very first hour. For hour two, I decided to work on a project that I started this summer um, while I was at the cabin with my girlfriend. The project is Mirabilia and it is Royal Games. This is Royal Games 1. There's 1 and 2. It is stitched on a 32 count optic white and I'm using the Call for DMC colors. Here I will insert my two photos for you. Again, the one is uh, prior to stitching and then what I was able to stitch today, which you can see is a little bit of the, hmm, the area that goes behind her neck. I don't know what you call that, the area where her dress pops up there. Okay, and now you can see the overall picture of where we're at. Again, this is a neat pattern because what happens with it is as people finish it, you are able to actually frame it and hang it either direction with whichever queen um, you would like to have on the top or on the bottom. And of course, the design um, throughout the center, I've mentioned this before, right along the center line here, you're able to actually stitch Queen of Hearts and then you could stitch the Queen of Hearts again on the bottom if you wanted. So in, essentially if you buy Royal Games 1 and 2, you could stitch four separate pieces or you could stitch them um, together. So you end up with the, the two queens on one piece, which I think is really neat. And it is quite a beautiful piece. In the design here, I can show you a bit closer up, there's a ton of gems and jewels that go into that as well. It's a really fun one. I actually really enjoyed pulling everything out and doing a little bit of stitching on them. A lot of my projects I tend to start and then work on a lot and then put them away for a certain period of time and so I did really enjoy pulling those out um, and working on certain ones. So for hour three, the next one I worked on was Greenhouse of Oddities by Lola Crow. I am using um, the called for flosses. However, for the fabric, I have changed it up a little bit and I'm using a 28 count Haunted by Picture This Plus. Um, and it is a Lugana, I do believe. I'll insert the two photos here. So the last time I worked on this was the end of October and you can see that um, I'm just working on page number six and it's almost complete. I have added at the bottom um, some sort of, hmm, some plants that kind of reach down to the bottom and a little bit of soil there. Again, it's not a lot uh, in that hour. Okay, we can zoom out and we can look at the overall piece here. It's actually a really fun piece. The colors are quite bright. And although I'm almost, um, you know, four, six done, the, the two pages I have not stitched uh, has a ton of stitching in it. And so that's something I'm going to tuck away now, uh, likely till October of next year. 
and at which point I'll pull it out and finish that for my seasonal stitch for October. So for hour four, I wanted to do something a little bit different. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about stitching and um, the community that stitching creates and why we all stitch and what that means to us. Uh, for Christmas, I uh, received this book called Sharp Notions. Um, it's a really interesting book. I, I saw it shared online initially by Tannis Fiber Arts and she is a, a Canadian yarn dyer um, and a knitter and designer. This book says it's essays from the stitching life and it's really interesting. It's a whole bunch of little short stories written by um, fiber artists, whether they are knitters, designers, stitchers, embroiderers, you name it. And they talk a little bit about, um, you know, what the art of stitching is to them, what it means to them culturally in terms of their family history, um, just that connection that they have with the past and um, finding connection with themselves and where they're moving on in in life um, also in terms of you know using stitching as a form of meditation um, trying to ground themselves and uh, sort of hold true to family heritage as well uh, the, I just want to read a little bit on the back here it shows how it may be interesting to you I do encourage people to read it so far it's I've only just started but it's quite interesting I've only read um, two essays in it so far and it's an easy read uh, it says whether the writers are hanging on by a piece hanging on by a piece of thread or piecing it all together these essays reveal how fiber work can be an intimate maker of the human experience the act of making presides in situations when conversations cannot in solitude in loneliness in grief in love in distraction and ultimately in connection this must read collection proves that textile arts can and do have a transformative impact on our lives. So I think it's really neat. So it makes me um, wonder, you know, in terms of our stitching community, why do you stitch? What is it about stitching that you absolutely love? Is there, um, you know, a family connection there? Do you feel like you want to stitch because you saw your family stitching previously? Do you want to carry on that tradition for yourself? Or is it something used for relaxation? Is it meditative for you? Um, you know, is it something that you do with your, your family members or your friends? Do you belong to a, a guild or a, a knitting circle or quilting circle? Um, so leave me a little comment. Comment. let me know you know why you've started stitching and I mean at one point you know a lot of people are introduced to it and it's whether or not um, you know throughout your journey you have learned to do a needle art and then continued on or a lot of us have learned it when we were younger and then came back to it um, as we are older so the question is you know why did you come back to it what is the connection there that um, that you feel what does you know needle arts mean to you so leave me a comment. I'd love to hear what uh, your input is and, and why you love to stitch. Welcome to hour five. So for hour five, I do have a new start for the month of December. It was a, a new start that my girlfriend, Samantha, the Hugo Stitcher, and I decided to start. Um, every December, Samantha stitches one of the Christmas Eve couriers by Nora Corbett. And she has stitched that for many years, I think eight years or something like that now. Um, maybe only six. I, I'm not sure. You have to check out her channel and she'll share her all about her career. She has so many that she's completed. This is one that I have started. And it's the first one that I have done. Um, it is Donner. I was going to say Blitzen. It's Donner. Samantha's trying to locate her Blitzen pattern and cannot find it. Uh, we thought maybe I have it, but I don't think I do, sadly. But I do have Donner. Um, so I started stitching him and he's actually a lot of fun. These patterns here have a ton of jewels and blending filament and they're just very, very um, sparkly and festive when they're finished. So I'm going to insert two pictures here. The first picture will show you where I was um, kind of at the, towards the end of December. I had put this down because with um, the month of December and Christmas preparations, I didn't have a lot of time to stitch. So, um, yeah, I just, I decided just to pick it up for this 12 by 12 and you can see that I worked on the white frame. Okay. If we look at the overall piece, it's right here. So this is stitched on a 32 count twilight blue linen. 
um, I think it was a Zweigart, um, I think so. And I'm using all the called for DMC floss as well as all the jewels and blending filament. So the border is, uh, it's not even a quarter done. Uh, there's many different layers that go around it. And then of course a ton of beading. So once I'm done the, the frame, I've stitched this one in hand. So once I'm done the frame, I'm gonna pop it on a frame there. Once I'm done the border, I'll pop it on a frame. Just because of the amount of um, jewels that need to go on there. And I do use invisible thread, which is a bit stretchy. So uh, I wanna make sure the back stitching and the, the jewels and everything lay just perfectly. So um, I'm gonna tuck this one away now and I'll pull it out for Christmas in July and work on that. Okay, for hour six, I was working on a little dimensions kit uh, for our kids, little ornaments for Christmas, and unfortunately I didn't have enough time to finish them, but I will finish them in January. Um, so this is the pattern here. I did order it from 123 Stitch. It is a, a three pack of ornaments called Sweet Christmas Ornaments. I have already finished the first one with the cup of hot chocolate there, and I'm currently working on the, the middle one um, for my daughter. It's a gingerbread house. I'll insert two pictures here for you so you can see where I was at previously and then where I'm at now. Um, I was able to fill in that gingerbread house uh, over the course of an hour and you know stitching on perforated paper is definitely a lot slower than um, stitching in hand on linen that's for sure. Okay so if we look at the overall piece now um, this is where I'm at. It's actually really cute. It has a ton of backstitch to go in there yet. Um, but like I said, I'll finish that um, in January. You know, I was surprised at the amount of time it took to stitch these. I was looking at them and there's actually a lot more stitching in there than you think. Uh, you know, a rough calculation, I figured about between 2,000 and 2,500 stitches, which is quite a lot. And um, I was just shocked at how slow my progress was at, at stitching these. So anyways, I'll wrap that up for them and they'll have it for their next Christmas. Okay, we're into hour eight. Um, I wanna share something with you that you may not have seen unless you watch Samantha the Huga Stitcher. In August, we did a floss tube together at the cabin, which was a ton of fun. And so if you have not seen that, definitely go check it out. It's a great video. There's lots of stories that we share um, and have a couple good laughs for sure. So uh, this is a, a project that um, Samantha and I both stitched and we figured, I think it was about 20... 14, 2012 to 2014 we had started it and it was one that I had tucked away for a long time and I just only recently was going through my stuff looking for something else and at the beginning of the summer I pulled it out and thought oh it's kind of bright and I'd love to stitch on that so um, this project is Tree of Hope and it is a stitch by Nora Corbett again with Mirabilia Designs. It's an older pattern that was released in um, 2010 and it does have DMC as well as some um, Karen uh, water lilies in there. So for this one here, I am using the Called for Fabric, uh, which is a 32 count natural brown linen. And it's um, stitched with all the Called for flosses and colors. So I'll insert the two pictures for you guys. Here you can see prior to, I'm just working at the trunk of the tree there. Um, and I was able to stitch a little bit more of the brown and starting some of the green leaves from the flower. And then we can zoom out and we'll take a look at the actual piece. So it's quite a large piece. Um, there's, a, there's a funny story to this. We started stitching, I, I started the tree first because I really did like the colors of the silks at the top. And I don't know if you can kind of see, I had kind of done some beading along the way too. And, and I do leave beading for last now, but at this one, I had done the beading as I went along kind of. And um, so half of it is nearly complete, but I need the other girl and the other um, part of the garden on the side there. The funny part to this one is look at her skin, you guys. So 
way back in the day, Samantha said, oh my gosh, have you seen, you know, some people are stitching their, the skin one over one. And, um, you know, at that point I'd only ever stu um, stitched a 32 count and, you know, two over two, and I had not ever ventured to, you know, a 40 count or using one thread, um, never mind one thread with one over one, right? So um, anyway, so how about I'll give it a go and I started and, uh, it was difficult for sure and um, I got really frustrated with it and I put it away and so when I pulled it out this summer um, I did end up completing her sort of her chest there was a mistake here which is why I had stopped and I tried to remove some of the stitches but they were so small I just was having a really hard time so um, I was able to fix it now but I went over finished the chest went down through her arm here and then was able to finish the flower on the side and the rest of her skirt there so having done that I don't know that I would um, do another uh, fairy or maiden one over one for her skin but that being said on this pattern there is a second girl and so I have to do it again right they have to match so I will stitch it one more time and I don't know that I will ever go back to do it that way um, but glad I checked it out and you know now that it's finished um, it does look really good I actually I do quite like it but it was a huge pain in the butt to do that being said now I do have like a magnifying light and lamp and um, maybe it wouldn't be so challenging we'll see how the other maiden goes there Okay, for hour nine, I wanted to talk about um, New Year's and um, some, you know, some people choose to make some resolutions and um, I'm not, I'm not huge on that myself. I do always have some things, some goals that I try to set um, to better myself in some way and last year I did decide that I wanted to make a point of any day that I'm not working to somehow be creative and for me that largely is stitching whether that is some form of needle arts I could be knitting or cross stitch um, could be crochet it could be crafting it could be sewing um, you know I did a little watercolor whatever it could be uh, and the goal of that was that creative outlet was just to help me kind of relax in a form of meditation um, but also I really enjoy being creative and making something with my hands uh, well, you know with stitching I feel like it is um, like painting with with thread right and so I'm kind of looking forward to this year and I think that uh, you know looking back at our stitching community and when I look at you know the common threaded stitcher what amazing uh, a thing that you know how it's connected all of us right and um, when I look at that I just think we can really grow this community even stronger than it is now there are so many people that are out there that are stitching that are joining us that are new to floss tube that are new to you know Instagram and posting things people of all ages all backgrounds all cultures um, and it's you know I think when uh, when they made the common thread and stitch your name I thought oh it's it's perfect because it does kind of all uh, connect us right to different fibers all woven together and um, you know when you take all the cultures that are out there in the world and we can have that common ground of stitching whether that is needle arts or you know sewing or knitting what what have you out there um, it's a really neat way for us all to kind of be connected. So what I wanted to do was encourage you to introduce stitching to somebody new this year. Um, you know, there are, it, it used to be a much more popular craft and not a lot of people have the time for it. And we don't have the time because we lead such busy lives, which means we really do need to take that time to slow down. Um, you know, when I was talking earlier about using stitching for meditation or connection with friends, uh, what have you, I, I know that um, from my education with mental health, 
the the solution to everything right now is connection and forming meaningful connections with other people interacting in person you know putting down the, the phones and the screens and actually being out having coffee one-on-one -on -one, going for a walk together getting together and doing some stitching together um, and so I think that in this day and age it's really important for us as moms and as friends and role models and leaders to you know demonstrate that we can slow down and we can you know put our our love and our time and our thought and our you know care and process into making something that is uh, beautiful and maybe you're only making it just for you but maybe you're making it for a friend or a family member um, but a lot goes into the process of making something you know we could just go out and, and purchase a new sweater but when you sit down and you decide i'm going to knit this myself and you know every stitch that you're stitching you're thinking about the person you're making that for um whether it's you know a friend or family or whoever might be lucky enough to get that object in the end right so you know that slow process and not um committing to that mass consumerism it there's so much more that's happening there behind the scenes and i think now more than ever we do need to slow down and um you know connect with people in in real life um and i i'm hesitant in mentioning this because i'm not a hundred percent sure but i think it was kia b that did it i think um, I remember watch, I watched a floss tube in December and she was talking about how she homeschools and uh, was able to introduce a group of moms to stitching. I think she had like 10 or 12 ladies that had come over and you know they all had a basic pattern with a hoop and a couple you know threads. Um, everyone got a needle and was just introduced to the, the art of cross stitch. And she had great feedback from that. People really loved it. They enjoyed their time together. But how wonderful for a mom to pause, make a connection with all these other moms on a different level. And also, you know, there's that common threaded um, stitcher aspect, right? Where we're weaving all these new connections together with people uh, through needle art. And um, so at the end of the day, I just really encourage you this year to introduce it to one new person in your community. So I think it would be really great if you can consider that in part of your New Year's resolutions this year. I think I may have messed up the hours, but I'm not sure. So we're at hour nine. Um, this hour I have decided to work on my Kringles project. I'll share it here. This is a project that was a new start for me for um, hmm, November 1st. And of course I, that was my plan, but it did end up starting a little bit later because of the fabric. So I'll insert my two pictures here. Um, right now I'm working on my very first uh, window dressing. And um, as you can see, I was able to finish the wheels in the train as well as add the snow on the bottom. Now, if we zoom out and we take a look at the overall picture, uh, it's quite a large pattern. Um, I think most of the stitching people say is in the roof and in the bricks. So, um, I'm glad I got the roof done and now I'm just working uh, through, there's three window dressings here and then, um, you know, it continues on with some really beautiful um, greenery that's draped across and then three more, two more rows, sorry, for a total of a, a three-story building there. So just zoom in so you can see that one box. It's getting quite dark, so um, I don't know the color is looking very dark on the screen, but it's a little bit lighter. You know, the bricks are more rusty. They look very dark in this picture. Anyway, so this is one that, um, you know, I, I didn't accomplish my goal. I, I had this really lofty goal of doing basically the, the first two pages of the six page pattern. And um, 
I'm almost com I've almost completed one page and then of course did the roof across the second page so um, I really need to set smaller goals for the month of December right there's just too much going on to get lots of stitching done I'll see you next hour Um, welcome to hour 10. For this one, I pulled out an older project that, well, I started it maybe, I think, two years ago or a year ago and haven't really worked on it much. It is um, 100 Owls by Owl Forest Embroidery and I'll insert a picture of the project here for you guys. And I'll insert where I was an hour ago and where I am now. So you can see that towards the bottom of the pattern, I've started stitching um, the main belly of the bird in the, the center there. And when we zoom out, um, the, the center is actually quite a large wreath and then the bird that goes in there um, is gorgeous. But I am making some changes to the pattern. I have bought a ton of extra silks um, and I just thought that I could add some different textures to some of the, the wings and the feathers for the owls. And you can see that I changed the face of that one there. So it's a bit more textured and, and poofy. And I'll do the same on the other owl. Just with the one hour time um, span, I wanted to do something that was a bit more structured. If I'm you know, going off in left field, I want to have the time to be creative and not feel pressured by an hour. So. It, this one's actually a lot of fun and I think that maybe I should try and work on it a bit more but I do have um, a f quite a few projects on the go for January already so we'll see um, but definitely like to get some time in on this one over the winter for sure. You guys were almost there. So I have to tell you, I forgot to mention that the Kringles pattern, I am using the called for colors, which are um, DMC and, hmm, oh, I can't remember now. I, I do have the pattern here, the present color works. Of course, the page I need is not here. I can't remember, it's a call for fabric as well. Anyways, um, it's the Access Commodities in Parisian Gray. I think that's a 30 count. Hmm, I should have written this down and talked about it when I was holding up the pattern, but oh well. Um, and then also for the 100 Owls, it was a kit by Owl Forest Embroidery, so it is with their hand-eye floss and their recommended fabric. The fabric, unfortunately, when it does come from the mini kit, uh, it doesn't specify what the color is um, or the make of the fabric either, so it's just the one that comes with the kit. So for our 11, I've saved best for last, of course. Um, this is my, kind of my legacy project, and that is Dutch Beauty. Um, now we all know this is a massive project. There are so many people working on it right now. Um, in the end, it's just shy of uh, three and a half by two and a half feet uh, on a 40 count, which is absolutely crazy. So um, there was no called for fabric on this one. I have chose to do Newcastle in 40 count. And I think a lot of people um, have done Newcastle as well. My only regret in doing that is that I find that, um, mm, I think it's color 842. The light cream doesn't really pop off of that, um, but I'm, I'm not going back now, so it, it's going to be what it's going to be. Um, so I'll, I'll insert two pictures here. I haven't worked on this since Sampler September. Um, you can see that what I've ended up started starting to stitch this time is um, the extra uh, partridge there, and then the start of a vase as well. So if we this is so big, you guys. If we zoom out, um, this is the board, just so you can see how big it is. And it, it's folded down the fabric as well. So it's absolutely massive. Um, this here is actually the center. So I'm, I'm getting there. There's three rows and this is the first row. So you can see I just kind of did the top there. 
it's been a really fun stitch and I've enjoyed the the pattern as well. There's a write-up on what all the motifs and what they mean. It was stitched by a 13-year-old girl in the lowlands of Holland um, in 1790. 1790. Oh yeah, it's on the pattern there. Um, yeah, I'm really enjoying it for sure. I find the colors a little bit muted for my liking, but I understand that it that is how it is with samplers, right? So, yeah. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that one. That one I'll be stitching for quite some time, I think, um, as are most people, right? I'll be right back for the last hour. Okay, we've made it to hour 12 of 12. Um, I'm gonna leave you hanging a little bit on this hour, unfortunately. I do have a new start that's planned for the year, and that will be the Peacock Tapestry, and it's a Teresa Wensler. Um, it's an absolutely gorgeous pattern. The pattern I've borrowed from a friend who didn't, uh, she forgot she had it and didn't know how fun the pattern was. So she's graciously lent it to me and I've kitted it up and it's all ready to go, almost all ready to go. Um, so for hour 12, I'm gonna be stitching on my own and I'm going to be, sorry, it's a bit of a pattern there, um, sharing that with you in a completely separate video because I do wanna talk about kitting up a Wensler and how to deal with so many flaws. Um, when I say so many, I'll show you what I've done so far because it's crazy. Okay, so this is the fabric. Um, it's actually called for a 28 count mushroom. I think I did a mushroom Lugana. Um, and I went with a 28 count just because the Wensers are so crazy with the different types of stitching and the blending and two threads, three threads, etc. Now, this is a third of the thread that's required for the, the project. And what I want to point out is these um, floss drops I did get from Adam Hart Cross Stitch. And if you look at these, they're all double. So it's not just like this side and this side are different. And it's only a third of what is required. So you can see here off the one floss drop, you've got two colors for that entire ring. So I think altogether um, I needed 115 floss drops times two. So um, yeah, they're all blended. I think there's only nine in the pattern that are not blends. So I'm gonna save this and I wanna talk more about this in a completely separate video because it's, a Wensler is very interesting in terms of organization and kitting it up. Um, I'll make a video probably in two or three days time and I will share that with you guys. So if you're thinking about doing a Wensler, um, you know, it, it will be helpful in terms of how to organize your flosses. There's many different ways. Um, lots of people do it differently and and I kind of, uh, I'll talk about my pros and cons for the different ways in my opinion and why I've chose to go the way I've gone. Um, and then also, um, Samantha and I are, are doing a, a Wensler for the January stitch and we want to um, create a hashtag. So we're working on making a decision on whether we use a pre-existing one or start a new one. I know that there's quite a few people that have reached out that are also um, have the Peacock Tapestry either in their uh, stash or you know started 30 years ago and um, are wanting to pull that out with me for January. So that'll be a lot of fun. So I'd like to thank you so, so very much, you guys, for um, checking out my 12 by 12. Uh, I've never done a 12 by 12, and I know mine's a little bit different. Um, I did want to really work on the whips and not start 12 brand new ones. I thought one big start's going to be enough for this month. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you um, like seeing a little bit of progress on everything. And I will have a video regarding a Wensler in maybe three days or so. And then after that, I'll do a regular video in a couple weeks. Uh, and I'll have a lot of haul to share with you guys as well and some plans of what I'll be working on. Thank you so much and Happy New Year's, you guys. I hope you have a wonderful year and I wish you good health and prosperity and lots of connection with family and friends. Thank you.